What's up, everybody? We got 10 minutes here to talk further in depth on MOA versus MRAD. First off, I should mention we almost didn't have 10 minutes to even talk about anything because when MC Ryan is out and we have MC Eric, everything goes to hell in a handbasket. Eric is over there, MC Eric, holding the PST, looking through it just for fun. We got wires everywhere. I had to set up the sound. It's Basically, it's a mess. We're falling apart at the seams. <sighs> but one person that is not a mess, that is a, a excellent guest and has already been on the podcast once before, not a 10-minute talk, though, is Jimmy Jordan across Hello. the table here. And, uh, okay, so I need to point out a couple of things, two things here. First off, I made a generalization in the MOA versus MRED podcast before. It was, it was actually just me on there. Uh, and I said that MOA and MRED were pretty much only used for essentially measuring bullet drop or using it for bullet drop holdovers and stuff like that. That's not exactly true. There are some other uses for MOA versus MRAD that we're going to get into today. Also, I'd like to point out, if anybody caught me when I was giving my example of giving a contractor a measurement for a front door in angles rather than a linear unit measurement like inches or feet, you know, as kind of my uh, comparison to whatever, not using linear units to measure in shooting instead of angular units, uh, I said that if you stood back 100 yards from a front door and you told the contractor to put the front door 32 degrees high, that would be a front door for, like, the big friendly giant, holding the big friendly giant on his shoulders. Anyway, um, apologies there. But okay, Jimmy, other Jimmy here. MOA and MRED can be used for other things. Most notably, I'd say one thing that people talk about a lot, I'm not sure a lot of people do it as much as they talk about it, right. but it is interesting ranging yep. targets yep, and utilizing essentially trigonometry, right? Basic algebra, really. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, right? Because you're using the angles to find out the range of targets or even sometimes the size of targets, too, is another thing. Oh, sorry, phone's too close to the, uh, the receiver there. Oh, you, lost, I've got to be, you, you lost me at algebra. <laughs> <laughs> so what's... Once they put letters in it, then it becomes a problem. <laughs> What's going on there? Um, when is somebody doing that? Slash, yeah. why is Emma waivers or is better than MRAD at that? Or is MRAD, MRAD sure. just fine at that? Yeah, so good question. I think ranging out a target or milling out a target with an MOA or mill based reticle is. I want to be clear that I think it's something that should be done only when you have to versus using it as your go-to option. I think mm -hmm. you're, by and large, you're going to be far better served, you know, with a laser range finder, just get that yardage. It's going to be more accurate, much faster than trying to calculate it. Um, but it really is a good skill to know how to do. Um, if you either a don't have that, or you find yourself at a match where they say targets out there, you don't get a range finder. We're not going to give you the range, figure it out. Right. Mm. Um, so, and I've, I've been in that situation before at the Vortex Extreme when they used to hold it in Utah. They had a they had a stage like that once. In any Savages. case... Savages. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, we had to mill one out one time. Anyways, um, so what it really comes down to is... Um, the important pieces, the really important pieces are knowing the size of the target. Um, if you don't know the size of the target you're going to misjudge the distance because it's a really critical piece of the formula. So mm -hmm. knowing the target size in inches, the closer you can get, the better. Is um, it inches for MRAD or MOA? Um, there's different ways you can calculate it based on, you know, like for meters or excuse me, if you're using like mills and meters, you can use like meters for the width of the target or, or centimeters or, or feet oh, okay. or inches. You can, you can work the math no matter what you have the measurement for. But, um, you know, the, the classical example, I think that we show most often is MOA with inches using the target diameter in inches. Um, and the formula is basically the, the worm equation width equals range, um, times mills or MOA measured. And so, you know, what you get into is you find the width of the target, you know, using one bracket on your reticle and counting out how many MOA or mil the target takes up. And that's the other piece that you want to be really precise with too, is just how accurately you're just how many MOA you're counting here and be as specific as you can be. Cause if you're off by a half or, or a full MOA, whatever that that's going to introduce quite mm -hmm. a bit of error into Especially the calculations. Yeah. The further away you go, the more it magnifies the error. Exactly. Right. Probably not something you want to be doing offhand then. Right. Yeah. No, you want to be you want to be good and steady when you're doing it. That's for sure. And yeah, I, I got a offhand Rick over there. <laughs> Slinging Rick. <laughs> He'll range it. Uh, <laughs> when you're talking about knowing the the size of the target or yep. the dimension of the target, I mean, I, 
these are kind of are they generalizations then? I mean, I guess a lot of times you don't have time yeah. to get a tape measure out and be like, oh, I know exact, you know, then I'll go yeah. back and yeah. fair point. You know, I think where all this came from or where, where, where this originated from as we use it today is, you know, the military was doing this for a long time that, you know, snipers would have, um, quick references jotted down in a manual, a stop sign is exactly this wide. Oh. This tire that's very common in this area sits this tall, right? So there was known measurements of things. It's <laughs> all part of dope. Right, exactly. It's all part of their field cards that they would you know, generate where they, they have pre-known information up front that they can use as, as a guideline, as a reference for ranging something. Hmm. Um, yeah, so that's that's more or less what we're doing, except you can do it with anything. You can, you know, range a target if you have a 16-inch a wide silhouette target, if you have a 10-inch wide plate, if you've got even with deer, it becomes a little bit trickier because mature buck versus young buck, mm -hmm. you know, that, that spine to sternum measurement mm -hmm. could be different. Or if you're measuring long ways, of course, that's quite a bit different. There's yeah. a bit of variation there. But you can probably sort that out too, even just like pick an average of in your region, right? In Arizona, coos deer is going to have, you know, a shallower chest than, you know, a big buck up in Manitoba, right? But you should right. you'd be able to sort that out, I'm yeah. sure. All research you can do up front. And using algebra skills, Mark, uh, you can also rearrange the equation because we have width equals, what is it again? Width yep. equals range times mils or MOA measured. Range times you're... mils or MOA measured. So if you have a laser range finder, and now I'm kind of getting into another thing, but you actually get the distance, let's say, on a deer, okay. and you have that, and you know how many MOA or mils it's taking up in your scope, then you can actually figure out the size. Yep, you can do okay. it. You can yeah. you okay. can work yeah. the formula in reverse. You too. Still if you know the range and you know how many MOA or mils you're taking up, you can isolate. You can you can work this formula however you want. You can isolate for range. You can isolate for you know width of the target to figure out whatever you need. Yeah, at that point, you would need a laser rangefinder to know the distance, right? So we're we're kind of getting into another thing there. If you know two of the three things, basically, you can always figure out the third. Yep. Using some using some algebra. Mark, is that something that they uh is that something I feel like I've heard some people say they do in let's say Alaska where you gotta, you know, shoot a legal moose or whatever. Do people ever do that where they start I mean, I know it's starting to get a little bit probably for some people uh sketchy if you're having to really measure it out like that. Maybe you just don't take the shot, but that could be something that you would do, right? I mean, I think it could be something that you certainly could do. Um, like you said, there's obviously going to be a little bit of margin of error. You know, if you're in an area where you had like a 50-inch a minimum, you know, and you measured it out and you ha you're like, oh, I've got 50. Not sure I would yeah. <laughs> trust that. <laughs> right. But um, it's not something that I've necessarily heard of people doing, but I think it could be a nice way to double check. Yeah, it's a, yep. it's a double check. If you're comfortably over, like you said, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to, like you said, I wouldn't want to trust it if it's borderline. You yep. could, could be under. There's a plus or minus factor there for sure. Yeah. A little discount double check. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Jimmy, is this is this something that you find yourself using very often? Not very often at all. Yeah. No, it's kind of what I was saying earlier, only if I have to, if I don't have a range finder, if I find myself at some sort of a match and it's an, it's an unknown distance challenge. Um, you know, certain courses will teach this. Um, I know Jim Cobber's course is at the site down in Illinois. Um, they teach this and we got to play with it and it's, it's cool to see. And it's also kind of humbling too, because you, you think you did a good job measuring it and you'd be shocked just how often you're, you know, 40, 50 yards off sometimes. And, oh, yeah. you know, the further away you go, that's a big deal. You know, it that, is. that can be, yeah, that could be a hit or miss, you know? Right. Um, is there anything too with this? Like when we talked about, or when I guess when I was chatting about MOA versus MRAD in that other 10 minute talk, I discussed the fact that some people, for example, prefer M MRAD. I keep sure. wanting to say Mills and I catch myself. Anyway, anyway Mills or MRAD, mm -hmm. uh, because of its, 0.1 scale system, mm -hmm. right? So they think it's easier to add on 0.1s sure. uh, rather than it would be to add on quarters, halves, you know, eighths, three quarters, whatever. It, does that really come into play much at all with, with the ranging slash sizing or milling side of things? Or Hard to say. Really matter so I, much I think there? the math gets... Like it's sometimes one, a little challenging to do in your head anyways, because regardless yeah. of whether you choose MOA or mill, um, you're still using a constant number in this equation. That's not a, a squared off number. Um, so for MOA, it's 95.5. Some people round to 100, but then you induce your 5% error if you stick to that. 100 makes a cleaner math in, in your head, but oh. you still have to knock off that 5% if you want to be right on. And for mills, it's 278 
you know, that's your for for MOA anyways for where does that number come into play? So so if you yep. read out the equation right now, and there's our there's our ten minute alarm, but I already wasted some time at the beginning talking about how bad Eric did setting us up. Um, <laughs> but so if you read out the equation, yep. Where does it work and how does that number fit in? Absolutely. So what the constant is for is it's what's keeping your angular unit of measure um, relative to inches per 100 yards. That's It's it's keeping it set to, mm, okay. uh, it's how it relates it to inches per 100 yards. So in this case, you know, you'd have, just take the, the basic example, you know, width equals range times MOA or mils observed. If we're looking at, you know, we get a width of the target. If we're isolating for range, it would be range equals, you'd have your width, times your constant oh, okay. over MOA or mil observed. And that um, constant, I see, it changes because you can't MOA. use the same constant for MOA as you're using for mils exactly. because they're different, different numbers. Different units of measure. Different yeah. units of measure. You okay, bet. that makes sense. Makes sense, right, Mark? It makes perfect sense. And you're going to be using it all the time now, right? Oh, you're talking about a rangefinder? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. And all laid out in very good detail in our manuals, too, I might add. Oh, yeah. All the reticle right. manuals for our PSTs and razors and whatnot, they all go into this in good detail. So if you get lost, so it's all there for you. That's right. Don't toss those out. They're also online. And there's a old school Vortex video as well with Jimmy Jordan. When I was uh, a little more youthful. A little, a little <laughs> oh, bit more geez. youthful. Man, <laughs> just such a stud, though. <laughs> uh, and he goes into the worm equation. He's got it all written out on a nice whiteboard and everything. Yeah, it's fantastic stuff. Well, thank you, Jimmy. Appreciate it. Thank uh, you. We went a little over 10 minutes here. Still going to, like I said, going to blame that on Eric. Um, all right. Just like in milling, we've got a margin of error. That's right. That's right. All right. We'll catch you guys next time. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Thank you. Thank you.